There will come a time in your life when you are faced with a situation that tests your very essence. A moment when someone disrespects you, tries to tear you down with words or actions that cut deep. Maybe they dismiss your work, undermine your character, or even question your worth. And at that very moment, everything inside of you might want to fight back, to lash out, to let them know they mess with the wrong person. But I'm here to tell you, that's not the way you win. The power, the real power, comes from doing something most people can't do in the heat of the moment, staying quiet. The power of silence in conflict is one of the most profound, yet underestimated forms of strength. In a world where everyone feels the need to voice their opinions, argue their points, or immediately respond to every slight, silence stands out as an unexpected and disarming tool. It's a form of control that communicates more than words ever could. When you stay silent in the face of conflict, you aren't retreating or giving up your taking command of the situation by refusing to be drawn into negativity. You choose not to be reactive, which shows that you are operating on a different level of awareness and emotional intelligence. Think about it, conflict is usually a clash of egos. One person wants to prove they are right, the other wants to defend their position, and before long, it's a battle of words, emotions running high, and nothing productive comes from it. In these moments, silence allows you to step back from the fray and observe, rather than react. It gives you space to assess the situation from a place of clarity and calm, rather than being driven by anger or frustration. Silence says, I am not giving my energy to this. It tells the other person that they don't have the power to disrupt your peace. Moreover, silence can shift the dynamics of any conflict. When someone is trying to provoke you, they expect a reaction, they thrive on it. Your silence, however, disarms them and throws them off balance because they don't know how to handle it. It's a strategy that speaks volumes without you having to say a word. Suddenly, they're left wondering what you're thinking, why you didn't respond the way they expected, and it forces them to confront their own behavior. Silence, in this context, isn't passive, it's active. It's a statement in itself, one that often compels the other party to reflect on their actions. In conflict, when you choose silence, you also show immense emotional control. Most conflicts escalate because people are unable to keep their emotions in check. Anger, hurt, and frustration cloud their judgment. And before they know it, they're saying things they can't take back. Silence, on the other hand, prevents that from happening. It keeps you in control, not just of the situation, but of yourself. You're not letting external forces dictate how you behave or how you feel. You're showing that you're the master of your emotions, not a victim of them. Silence also allows you to protect your dignity. In the heat of conflict, it's easy to get caught up in the moment and say things that you'll regret later. But by staying silent, you avoid that trap. You maintain your composure, your grace, and your self-respect. You're not allowing the conflict to define you or pull you down to a level you don't belong at. You're choosing to remain elevated, to stand in your own power without getting dragged into unnecessary battles. And beyond the immediate situation, silence has a longer-term impact. It creates space for healing and resolution. Words can often deepen wounds, but silence can allow both sides to cool down, reflect, and approach the issue with a clearer mind. It opens the door for understanding and reconciliation because it gives both parties a chance to step back from their emotions and see the bigger picture. Silence in conflict is not about avoiding the issue or being passive. It's about taking a deliberate, thoughtful approach to handling tension. It's about recognizing that not every situation requires a verbal response, and that sometimes the most powerful thing you can do is to say nothing at all. Emotional control is strength. In a world where reactions often come faster than reason, mastering your emotions is a rare and invaluable skill. When you can control your emotions, especially in challenging situations, you're not just demonstrating discipline, you're showing true power. It's easy to fly off the handle, to let anger or frustration dictate your actions. But that's the path of least resistance. Emotional control requires self-awareness, restraint, and a deep understanding of your own inner workings. It's not about suppressing how you feel, but about channeling those emotions in a way that serves your highest good. Imagine that someone disrespects you. They try to belittle you, provoke you, 
or push your buttons. The natural instinct for most people is to react immediately, lash out, argue back, prove the other person wrong. But when you choose to remain calm, when you hold your ground without letting anger or hurt take over, you're sending a much stronger message. You're showing that your peace, your stability, can't be easily shaken by external forces. That kind of control shifts the power dynamic entirely. The person trying to provoke you expects a reaction. When they don't get it, they lose their footing. Your composure becomes a mirror, reflecting back to them their own lack of control. This strength isn't about ignoring your emotions either. It's about being fully aware of them and choosing how and when to express them. You acknowledge your feelings, but you don't let them drive the car. Instead, you decide whether it's worth engaging in the conflict or whether it's better to walk away. Emotional control gives you the ability to choose your battles wisely. Not every confrontation deserves your energy, and by staying calm, you're not only protecting yourself from unnecessary stress, but you're also preserving your mental and emotional resources for the things that truly matter. Think about how many mistakes people make when they're caught up in their emotions. How many relationships have been damaged, opportunities missed, or words said in anger that couldn't be taken back? Emotional control allows you to avoid those traps. When you're calm, you can think clearly, make better decisions, and respond rather than react. This is the difference between someone who is constantly in survival mode, reacting to whatever life throws at them, and someone who thrives by steering their own course, no matter the circumstances. Emotional control is also a key component of resilience. Life is full of challenges, people will disappoint you, plans will fall apart, and unexpected obstacles will arise. It's inevitable. But how you respond to those challenges is what defines you. When you're able to control your emotional responses, you're not knocked off course by every bump in the road. Instead of being consumed by frustration or anger, you can take a step back, assess the situation, and respond from a place of strength. This resilience isn't about pretending everything is fine or bottling up your emotions. It's about maintaining your inner balance no matter what's happening around you. Emotional control also fosters better relationships. When you're able to manage your emotions, your emotions, you're less likely to say or do things that hurt others in the heat of the moment. You communicate more effectively, listen more deeply, and are more empathetic to those around you. This doesn't mean you're passive or that you let people walk all over you. It means you can assert yourself from a place of calm confidence rather than defensiveness or aggression. Emotional control builds trust because people know they can count on you to be consistent even in difficult times. It's important to note that emotional control is a lifelong practice. It's not something you master overnight. There will be moments when your emotions get the better of you. And that's okay. The goal isn't perfection, but progress. Each time you choose calm over chaos, you're strengthening your emotional muscles. Over time, it becomes easier to navigate situations that would have once thrown you off balance. Ultimately, emotional control is about reclaiming your power. It's about recognizing that while you can't always control what happens to you, you can control how you respond. And in that response lies your true strength. When you master your emotions, you master your life. You're no longer at the mercy of circumstances or other people's actions. You become the author of your own story, writing each chapter with intention and purpose. Silence is your shield. In the midst of chaos, misunderstandings, or conflict, silence becomes your most powerful form of protection. It is often underestimated, seen as passive or weak, but silence holds a strength that words sometimes cannot. In moments of tension or confrontation, remaining silent allows you to observe, reflect, and process without reacting. It gives you the space to rise above the noise, to stay centered while others may lose their composure. It's not about avoidance or backing down, it's about choosing a more measured, thoughtful approach that shields you from being drawn into unnecessary conflict or drama. When you respond with silence, you're giving yourself time. Time to think, time to cool down, time to choose your response rather than letting your emotions take the lead. It's in this silence that you reclaim your power because the moment you open your mouth in anger or frustration, you hand over control of the situation. Silence, however, allows you to retain control. It prevents you from saying things you may later regret. 
Things that might escalate the situation are worse than a misunderstanding. It's like an invisible armor protecting you from reacting impulsively or being manipulated by someone else's words or actions. Silence is not passive, it's an active choice. It says, I won't give you the satisfaction of my reaction. It forces the other person to sit with their words, to reflect on their actions without the immediate gratification of your response. In this way, silence can be disarming. People expect a reaction. They expect you to fight back, to argue, to defend yourself. But when you choose silence, you disrupt that expectation. The other person is left without a target to latch onto, and in that quiet space, they often reveal more about themselves than they intended. Silence allows you to read between the lines, to understand what's really being said, and to choose how and when you will engage. This silence doesn't mean you're bottling things up or avoiding addressing important issues. It means you're deciding to respond when you're ready, not when someone else dictates. Silence gives you the power to set your own terms. It allows you to process your emotions, weigh your options, and decide the most effective way to address the situation. It's a pause that puts you in control. While others might be quick to speak, quick to anger, or quick to defend, you stand firm, allowing the storm to pass before making your move. Silence also sends a message of confidence. It shows that you're not easily rattled, that you don't need to justify yourself or prove a point in every situation. You're secure enough in who you are that you don't need to engage in every battle, especially ones that aren't worth your time or energy. It's a reminder that sometimes the strongest response is no response at all. Silence can speak louder than words, especially when it's backed by self-assurance and inner strength. It signals that you know your worth, and you don't need to explain it to anyone. There's also an element of mystery in silence. When you don't react, people are left wondering what you're thinking. They can't predict your next move, and that unpredictability gives you an advantage. In silence, you become an enigma, hard to read, impossible to pin down. This keeps others on their toes, unsure of how to approach you or how to handle the situation. They may try to provoke you further, to draw you out, but your silence stands as a firm boundary. It says, I am not here to entertain your chaos. But silence is not only a defense mechanism, it's also a space for healing. It's in the quiet moments, away from the noise of the world, that we can reconnect with ourselves. Silence offers a chance to reflect, to listen to our own thoughts, and to find clarity. It's a retreat from the constant demands and pressures of life, a way to recharge and regain our sense of purpose. When the world becomes overwhelming, silence is where we can retreat, recalibrate, and return stronger than before. Silence can be a path to peace. In many situations, engaging in an argument or confrontation only serves to escalate tensions. But choosing silence allows you to diffuse the situation, to let it settle on its own. It's a form of de-escalation, where you refuse to feed into the negativity or hostility. Silence creates space for calm to return, for reason to surface, and for more productive conversations to happen later. It shows that you value peace over proving a point that you are mature enough to let things go when necessary, and that you prioritize your well-being over temporary satisfaction. At times, silence is also a form of protest. It's saying, I refuse to engage with this energy, whether it's a toxic situation, a negative person, or an unjust system. Silence can be a way of standing your ground without being pulled into a confrontation. It's a refusal to participate in something that doesn't serve you or align with your values. It's a quiet yet powerful stance that says, I'm better than this, and I won't stoop to that level. Silence can be a statement of dignity, of self-respect, of maintaining your own integrity in the face of opposition. When you choose silence, you also open yourself up to deeper listening. In the quiet, you can hear more clearly whether it's the voice of your own intuition, the wisdom of others, or the subtle truths that often get drowned out in the noise. Silence gives you the space to absorb, to understand, and to respond thoughtfully. It sharpens your awareness, making you more in tune with the dynamics of a situation and more capable of making informed decisions. Silence then becomes not only a shield, but also a tool for growth and insight. It's important to remember that silence doesn't mean weakness. It's a deliberate choice, a form of strength 
that requires patience, discipline, and a deep sense of self-worth. In a world that often rewards those who shout the loudest, choosing silence can feel counterintuitive. But true power doesn't need to announce itself. True strength isn't in proving yourself to others, but in knowing that you don't have to. Silence is the embodiment of that strength. It's the quiet confidence of someone who is secure in who they are, someone who doesn't need validation from others, someone who understands the value of peace over conflict. Focusing on your higher self is one of the most profound acts of self-care, growth, and spiritual alignment that you can embrace. It's about stepping outside of the distractions, noise, and chaos of the everyday world to connect with a deeper, more purposeful part of who you are. Your higher self is that inner wisdom, that compass that guides you toward what truly matters. It is not swayed by ego, fear, or insecurity. Instead, it operates from a place of clarity, peace, and profound understanding of your life's bigger picture. When you focus on your higher self, you elevate your thoughts, your actions, and your entire existence to align with a greater purpose. To connect with your higher self, you first have to quiet the noise around you. We live in a world filled with distractions, social media, constant notifications, deadlines, obligations, and the never-ending rush to achieve and perform. These external pressures can easily pull us away from the calm, quiet place where our higher self resides. This is why practices like meditation, mindfulness, and reflection are essential. They allow you to step back from the external and turn inward, to listen to that quiet voice that often gets drowned out by the chaos of life. It's in the silence, in the stillness, that you can hear the guidance of your higher self. Focusing on your higher self means you are consciously choosing to live in alignment with your values, your purpose, and your truth. It's easy to get caught up in the expectations of others, to feel pressured to conform to societal norms or to chase goals that aren't truly yours. But when you focus on your higher self, you begin to see past these illusions. You start to recognize what is real and what is not, what serves your growth and what holds you back. Your higher self will never push you towards superficial achievements or material success for the sake of validation. Instead, it will guide you toward fulfillment, joy, and a sense of inner peace that cannot be shaken by external circumstances. One of the most powerful aspects of focusing on your higher self is the shift in perspective that it brings. When you live from your higher self, you begin to see challenges not as obstacles, but as opportunities for growth. You understand that life is not happening to you, but for you. Every experience, no matter how difficult or painful, is a part of your journey toward becoming the best version of yourself. Your higher self sees the long game and understands that setbacks are temporary and that even in your darkest moments, there is a lesson to be learned, a strength to be gained, and a deeper level of wisdom to be uncovered. Focusing on your higher self also means letting go of fear and insecurity. Fear is a product of the ego it thrives on doubt, on the belief that you are not enough or that you must constantly prove yourself to the world. Your higher self, however, knows that you are already complete. It knows that you have within you everything you need to live a life of purpose, joy, and fulfillment. When you operate from this place of inner knowing, you are no longer driven by fear. You no longer make decisions based on what will make you feel safe or validated in the eyes of others. Instead, you make choices that are aligned with your truth, your values, and your highest potential. Living from your higher self requires trust. Trust in yourself, trust in the process, and trust in the timing of your life. It's about understanding that there is a divine plan at work, one that may not always be immediately clear, but that is always guiding you toward your highest good. This trust allows you to release control, to let go of the need to have everything figured out, and to surrender to the flow of life. Your higher self knows that everything happens in perfect timing and that even when things don't go according to plan, it's because there is something greater in store for you. Another key aspect of focusing on your higher self is the ability to transcend the ego. The ego is concerned with image, with how you are perceived by others, with accumulating status, possessions, and external markers of success. It is reactive, defensive, and easily triggered by criticism or failure. Your higher self, on the other hand, is not concerned with any of these things. It is secure in its own worth, independent of what anyone else thinks or says. It operates from a place of unconditional love, compassion, and understanding. 
When you focus on your higher self, you are able to rise above petty conflicts, judgment, and negativity. You begin to see others not as competitors or threats, but as fellow travelers on their own journey of growth and evolution. Focusing on your higher self also brings a sense of purpose and meaning to everything you do. No longer are you going through the motions of life, simply trying to get by or achieve the next goal. Instead, every action, every decision is infused with intention. You understand that your life is a reflection of your inner state and that by aligning with your higher self, you are creating a reality that reflects your highest potential. This sense of purpose gives you the motivation to keep going, even when things get tough. It reminds you that you are here for a reason and that your unique gifts and talents are meant to be shared with the world. One of the most beautiful aspects of focusing on your higher self is the sense of peace that comes with it. When you are aligned with your higher self, you are no longer caught up in the drama and stress of everyday life. You are no longer worried about what others think of you or whether you are measuring up to some external standard of success. Instead, you are grounded in your own truth, confident in your path, and at peace with where you are in your journey. This inner peace radiates out into every aspect of your life, creating a ripple effect of positivity, joy, and love that touches everyone you encounter. Focusing on your higher self also helps you cultivate a deeper sense of empathy and compassion, both for yourself and for others. When you operate from your higher self, you understand that we are all connected, that we are all on a journey of growth and self-discovery. You become less judgmental, less critical, and more understanding of others' struggles and imperfections. You also become more forgiving of your own mistakes, recognizing that they are simply part of the learning process. This sense of compassion allows you to build deeper, more meaningful relationships, both with yourself and with others. Living from your higher self is not always easy. It requires conscious effort, mindfulness, and a commitment to growth. There will be times when the ego tries to pull you back into old patterns of fear, doubt, and insecurity. But each time you choose to focus on your higher self, you strengthen your connection to that part of you that is wise, loving, and aligned with your true purpose. Over time, this becomes your default way of being, and you begin to experience life from a place of deep fulfillment, joy, and inner peace. Ultimately, focusing on your higher self is about becoming the best version of yourself. It's about shedding the layers of fear, doubt, and insecurity that have been holding you back and stepping into the fullness of who you are meant to be. It's about living in alignment with your truth, your purpose, and your values and creating a life that is a true reflection of your highest potential. When you focus on your higher self, you are no longer just existing, you are thriving. You are living with intention, with purpose, and with a deep sense of fulfillment that comes from knowing you are exactly where you are meant to be.